Hallelujah. This morning, as we partake of the communion, we just want to say yes to the Lord. Yes, Lord. He's yes. offering us something. Yes, Lord. The communion represents His offering to join in a contract with Him. It's the way that contracts were done back then. This is His seal upon us. The bread and the, and the wine offer a seal upon us. He, he said that this is a covenant that He'll make with us. And it's not just done with chisel and stone or on parchment, but He will make it upon our hearts. That this will seal us to Him and it be done with His own blood. So let us take this and let us think about that. Let us say yes to the Lord that we're willing to do and be His people. We're willing to do and accept what He had to do to get us there. So we say yes, Lord, and we take this bread that represents His body. We say yes, Lord. We say thank you, Lord, and we eat it together in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For you are worthy. You are mighty. You are capable of doing many wonderful things that we can't even imagine. Our lives seem short. Sometimes they seem minuscule and unimportant. They seem things that we don't even know what, what's the purpose sometimes. We, we can't do anything. We, we seem lost. We wonder why we're here. What what possible purpose could we serve? But we don't think about that. If we turn our lives over to God, if we put our lives in God's hands, then maybe we might be somebody like Billy Graham, or the person who prayed for Billy Graham, the person who taught Billy Graham, the person who, who gave him a Bible, a person who was in his life for just a moment and influenced him in a positive way, a person who kept him out of harm's way. We could be someone like that if we just trusted God. Or maybe we won't. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe we just need to trust God in the meantime. Amen, amen, amen. The important thing is that we put our faith where it belongs, and that's in God's hands. Because this covenant is an everlasting covenant. This covenant is the one that seals us with Lamb's blood, the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. So let us say yes to the Lord, because He's saying yes to us. He's saying you are worthy because I am worthy, not because you did anything right. Not because you, you, you found the way. I am the way. Do you know the way? So let us take this blood. Let us drink it together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, again for another opportunity to be before you. And, you know, it's a wonderful thing to be together in the fellowship and the company of the saints, of brothers and sisters. And even, you know, those who are just seeking the Lord, they may not have gone through the sanctification process. They may not be fully there yet, but they're trying. They're interested. I know I was there, you know, in uh, 2006. 2006. And uh, my wife and my mother-in-law and my children drove me to church and they wanted me to come and they wanted me to hear the word of the Lord. They wanted me to, to come to the Lord. They wanted me to be a part of what was going on in their lives and, and what God was doing. And I just wanted my wife to shut up. But the way that I came to the Lord wasn't because of the mighty word of God being preached. It wasn't because of a powerful persuasive argument. It wasn't because some mighty evangelist like Billy Graham got up and beat me with a Bible and I just fell down because I was afraid of the hellfire and brimstone. Nicole, why did I come to the Lord? Mm. It was the praise. It was the praise. Praise, what you did praise you music. Yes. So today, Nicole, um, when we preach, we, we're pastors together in this ministry, Prayer Can Help Ministries, and as the Lord directs us, we alternate preaching. She preached last week, I preached this week, whatever. And uh, so she'll pick the songs when I preach. I pick the songs when she preaches as directed by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. And she was directed by the Spirit of God, as I believe. 
to pick extra songs. Mm -hmm. And you know, my tired back and legs was like, okay, sure, Pastor Nicole, I will obey. As the Spirit of the Lord directs you, I submit to the Spirit of God in you. And as I was praying about this sermon, I was like, Lord, praising you is a discipline. Yes, yes, yes. It is an important, important discipline. Amen. And I'll be honest with you, it, when I, I was a, a, a man of God in the church when I came to the Lord in 2006, and I didn't get praise at first. I love this guy. He was a wonderful man of God, James. And I would see him with his family praising God. Mm -hmm. And at first I didn't get it. I thought, he, you know, because when I first came there, I thought everybody was phony. Mm -hmm. I thought, man, these guys are so fake. There's no way that they get all this out of praising God, out of shouting and jumping and clapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a show, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then as, then as I got to know them, they were genuine. Yeah. They were really getting something out of it. It wasn't just like uh, going to a football game or, or, or a wrestling match or, or whatever. They really were getting something out of putting their efforts into praise yeah. and to worship and to yeah. fellowship. And, and one Sunday morning, I'm standing there, standing up for praise and worship, and James comes over to me, and he said something to me. Man, I wish I could remember what it was, but he said something in my ear. And I was going to make a joke this morning, but I'm not going to make a joke. I was going to say something, do you know the way, but now I'm not going to do it. <laughs> anyway, he said something in my ear, and it just clicked. And from then on, I'm not going to say I'm praise Master Ben, and you know I fall out in the Lord, but I, I've gotten more into it, and I can feel the power of praise, and, and praise God, I've even done a couple teachings on praise, a couple are on the website that we have, Prayer Can Help Ministries, or prayercanhelp.com, and today's message is called Praising the Power Down. Because mm -hmm. as I was praying about the sermon and the, and the extra songs that Nicole got uh, to, to put forth, that's really what God was ministering to me, there's power in praise, and there's a reason to praise. It's not just a, a, a pretty thing to do, it's not just about, you know, doing it because the Bible says to, which it does, but there's a reason behind it. Amen? Amen? I stand before you today having seen the movie Black Panther. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's been really, really hyped up. But I thought it was fantastic. Mm. I did. Now, my son and I might disagree a little bit. He's really critical of movies because he's a movie file. He, he really gets into it, nitpicks things. So he'll say, oh, well, the CGI here was this and da da da. But I thought it was really fantastic. I thought the acting was fantastic. I'm not going to pick apart the CGI because all CGI can be picked apart, you know, but I thought it was fantastic. And I love superhero movies in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My favorite superhero is still The Incredible Hulk. Um, but truth be told, um, if you think about superheroes, comparing them to us, all of our might will one day not be strong enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, all of our intelligence will not be smart enough. Mm -hmm. um, all of our speed will one day not be fast enough. All of our money will not one day be enough to pay, and all of our best efforts will fail. There's a song by a Christian group called, I Will Fail You. And basically the message is that I'm not your God. If you lean on me and if you look to me, I'm going to fail you. I'm not your God. I'm not Jesus. Don't look on me. I can help you. I can show you who Jesus is, but I will fail you. Please, yes, yes. Lean, lean on me as your brother, as your friend. I'm not Jesus. Um, when we look at these superhero movies, we have to realize they're a team and they each have different strengths, like the Avengers. You know, there's, there's Hulk, he's strong, and, and, and there's Thor, he can fly, and he's fast, and, and there's Tony with his tech and his gadgets and his intelligence, and there, there's Black Widow who's fast and quick and nimble, and they, they play off of those things, but again, they all have weaknesses too. Amen. Amen. And the same thing for us as the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, it says that Jesus gave gifts, and but he expects us to utilize and grow in those gifts. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. gave us disciplines to strengthen them. Yeah. You know, when you look at even the X-Men, they had a training room mm -hmm. to grow in those gifts, yes. to yes. strengthen those gifts, those abilities. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know how to use your gifts, well, when you're before your enemy, well, you're gonna fall on your face. Mm -hmm. You're gonna fail. And then when the world needs you, when your family needs you, when you need you, mm -hmm. you're going to fail. Yeah. So, praise. Let's go to Psalms 68, 26, please. I forgot to tell you guys, get your Bibles. If you get your Bibles, please. Psalms 68, 26. First person there, let me know. Psalms 68, 26. 
Praise is the public expression of our affection for and our affiliation with our God. Corinne, could you read that, please? Bless God in the congregations, congregations. Give thanks, gratefully praise Him. The Lord, you who, you who are from Jacob, the fountain of Israel. Amen. And that, of course, is the Amplified, right? Um, Nicole, could you read the NLT, please? Praise God. Psalm 68, verse 26. Praise God, all you people of Israel. Praise the Lord, the source of Israel's life. And of course, both of these are beautiful. And I love the expression about praising God. He's our source. He's our life. There's a reason to recognize this. As we go out in the world, and if we recognize who our source is, where our power comes from, it helps us to remember who to go to when we struggle. It helps us to remember, just like you know, in these superhero movies, well, lean on your team. Don't try to do this alone. Don't go out there and think, you know, I can handle this alone because you can't handle everybody. You know, in, in Ultron, if they tried to handle him one by one, they would have been picked apart. They needed each other. Praise is a part of our witness and testimony to his goodness, his strength, his power, and the working of him in our lives. So when we praise, it's actually a way to, you know, we talked for a while about fighting the enemy in our lives. It's a way to fight the enemy. If we feel we're being attacked, it's a way to, to, to battle back, to fight back when we're feeling um, sadness, when we're feeling um, depression, when we're feeling the, the things well up in us, and we feel like we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, when we feel like, oh, you know, this person isn't, uh, I'm going to fail at my job, but wait a minute, God has done this, God has helped me to do these things. You can praise Him because you can see God has done these things through me. God has shown me how to do these things. You know, um, I'm not saying I, I'm, I'm Tony Stark. I'm not super intelligent. But I have figured out how to do little things around the house. Praise Jesus. He has given me a, a, a small amount of intellect to work with my hands. Like um, we had a problem with the heat. So I made a little home video about how I figured out how to fix the heat instead of Praise calling God. out a technician. Praise Jesus. You know, and things like that. So... We all have little victories in our life that we can use to praise God and even sometimes praise our friends and family and ourselves. Let's go to Psalms 150. Psalms 150. Very last one. Nicole, you want to read that for me, please? Psalms 150. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heaven. Praise Him for His mighty works. Praise His unequaled greatness. Praise Him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise Him with the leery and harp. Praise Him with the tamarind and dancing. Praise Him with strings and flutes. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath or that breeds, sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. And again, as we go on, think back about all these descriptions of how to praise the Lord. It's not just, and I don't want to pick on Catholics today, but you know, it's not just this stoic, quiet hymn standing in, in the church making that, oh, you know, and it's not just those quiet songs that you hear on the radio. S symbols. Uh, flutes, strings, dancing, blast of a ram's horn, a blast. Incredible praise. So, and even it ends, there's at least three, four, five, six exclamation points in that joint. It's all about ex exclaiming before the Lord. You know, don't be afraid to praise people. And I'm speaking to my church, this little church that God has given me to watch over. I love you guys, but don't be afraid to come out of your shell and praise the Lord. And I, like I said, I was there. It's okay. Dance, sing, clap. Don't be afraid to get there and, and to work on it because it's a skill. It's something you can work on and clap and sing before God. Praise and worship are also very powerful when combined. But they're two different things. Worship is more of an intimate kind of private thing. That's more of an inside, you know, God, I love you, kind of something like between a husband and wife. 
but praise is that public adoration. Um, let's turn to Revelation 15.4. Revelation 15.4. This is why worship is reserved for God alone. Praise, you know, we remember in Bible study we've been doing this, this book about um, becoming the woman that God wants you to be. And in Proverbs 31, it talks about praise, her, her children rise up and praise her. And that's acceptable. Because praise can be for anyone who does a good job. We, we can praise each other on the job. But worship is for God alone. It says that very close to the beginning of the Bible. So, Corinne, could you read Revelation 15, 4, please? Who will not fear reverently and glorify your name, O Lord, giving you honor and praise and worship? For you alone are holy. For all the nations shall come and worship before you. For your righteous acts, your just decrees and judgments have been revealed and displayed. And like I said, praise can be given to anyone who has done something who is worthy of praise. But worship, worship is reserved for God alone. Now, if you, but if you can combine both of those to God, for God. Now, don't misunderstand um, praise. You should be given that for God, what he has done. But we are, we've got to recognize each other's achievements. Like when my wife, my son, my son-in-law, my mother have done something, I always try to praise people. And you should. It's just kind. It, it's encouraging. But God, praising God, helps you to remember He's a part of your life. He's done something. And it keeps you humble. You know, that God loves humility. Because mm -hmm. it keeps us from that, that pride mentality. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and we don't want to just think of praising God as like being done in song and dance. But it's a way of life. Um, when people ask us, well, how did you do that? I remember when I was working for a game company called Game Crazy. It used to actually be a decent competition for GameStop. You know, um, my district managers, we, we were actually doing really good. And, and they said, well, Ben, how, we were on a conference call. Ben, how are you guys make, making those numbers over there? We were up on, the, we had the little yeah. um, cards for getting the discounts and we were getting pre-orders. We were getting really good and used sales, getting the uh, warranty cards. How are you guys doing such good numbers? Da, da, da. Um, you know, God is good. He said, apparently in Heightsville, God is good. <laughs> and he went on to ask the next person. So we can't be afraid to include yes. God in cover. Yep. I worked for Arby's. And I would, you know, we cleaned up the store. Customers were coming in. My boss was the district manager. My boss's boss wanted to come by and see why our numbers were up. I had started posting on the board um, a daily planner that I designed. And at the bottom of the daily planner, I started putting scriptures and a word of encouragement to my team. And part of me was like, a lot of corporate America doesn't like that idea. I should take it down. Part of me just wanted to become a pastor full time. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to leave it. They're going to fire me. And I can be, I can be a pastor full time then. I'm going to leave. <laughs> guy came in, really nice guy, shook my hand, walked around the store. Everything looks great. He was talking to my people. He came up, looked at the board, read my thing. Looks really nice, man. Walked to the back. I was like, oh, okay. So we can't be afraid of the repercussions when we do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. When we are praising God and doing the right thing, the Bible says, be afraid of doing the wrong thing because you deserve the punishment. Mm -hmm. But when we stand up and do the right thing, mm -hmm. if we're punished, God then will still be with us. Because that will happen. We can't be surprised. Let's go to the book of Luke, please. Book of Luke. Now, Jesus, we got to understand, Jesus is Jesus. There's things we can see similar to happens to us, but Jesus is still Jesus. So when he did things, things happened. Things manifested, things changed, but Jesus was still Jesus. Let's go to Luke 5, 25 and 26, please. Benji, could you read that for me? And, he, and immediately, as everyone watched, the man jumped up picked up his mat, and went home praising God. Yes. Everyone was gripped with great wonder and awe, and they praised God, exclaiming, We have seen amazing things today. Now, we as believers and servants of God should automatically point to God and say He did it, and give witness and testimony to the fact. Our praises of God's power draw people to Christ and serve to protect us in tough times when healed men of Jesus' day ran around praising Him. 
others came to see it. And we search our lives and find those times when we shouldn't have made it or just can't figure out how we accomplished something. That is when we see God moving in our lives, praising Him when we are feeling lack or suffering for those past victories, current condition and future deliverance helps us protect our hearts from the enemy finding a way in. We can protect ourselves. We can put up a shield. It acts as a defense if we remember those things. That's the experience. Just like when I remember what Nikki has done for me, my wife, Nicole, has done for me and my children, and, and a woman tries to come and tempt me. Now, I know who my wife is. Not only is she beautiful, but she's intelligent. She, she has been there for my children. She has been there for my family. She, I'm not going to risk losing that because some woman tries to, no, get away from me. Step back. We have to understand that just like a general gets recognized for his past victories, God gets to be recognized for his victories in our life. I mean, if you really think about it, I, I would recommend you take a notebook and go... And think about everything in your life. And you know, it might take some time, but it's worth it. And the victories, the defeats in your life. And jot them down and say, well, how did, I did, how did this happen? What victories were, can I attribute to the power of God, Him intervening? How did this happen? And you'll be able to see the hand of God more often than you think. And it will help your relationship grow. Let's go to the book of Acts. Acts 4. 19 through 21. And when we look into the past and we can see what God has done for us in a particular area, we can spread hope to someone else. That's one of the reasons that the Bible was written the way it was. Because the church who struggled through things can share with us what they did, what they went through. So we can have hope. If, if they went through this, and they made it, then surely we can too. They struggled. I mean, yeah, we, we're not an agricultural society, but Paul was attacked. Paul tried to preach. Paul tried to share. But he made it. So we can too. Acts 4, 19 through 21. Kirk, could you read that for me, please? But Peter and John replied, Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. The council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go. They didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot, for everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign, the healing of a man who had been lame for, many, for, for more than 40 years. As soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O Sovereign Lord, Creator of earth, heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant. When we can act in such a way and know that it affects lives around us and, and garnishes praise for God, that's when we know we're doing the right thing. We know that, yeah, it may not be comfortable for us, that it may not put us in a position that everybody appreciates, but it's powerful. That man was crippled outside of, outside of the, the gate beautiful, but they stopped. They, they, he, Peter said, I don't have gold and silver, but I'm going to give you my faith. His faith is what healed him. The man didn't have faith for healing. He was begging. But Peter said, well, be healed. He got up and was dancing. And then they got in trouble for it. They got in, and then Peter was like, well, I, I, I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. I, I'm serving the Lord. And so they didn't know what to do. These Pharisees, these Sadducees, these leaders, I don't, we don't know what to do. Because they were seeing this miraculous healing. And that's what happens when people are confronted with your faith and it's real and it's powerful. They don't know what to do. What, what do we do with these people who are really believing, are really truly believers? And they love God, but it disagrees with our way of life. It disagrees with what we want to do. But your praise has to be powerful. Your praise has to counteract 
these things that are happening all around us, things that don't make sense to us. For example, Job. Job 1, 20 through 22. Job is a tragic story. And, you know, we as a family, as a church, did a study through there, and it's really, really difficult to read what happens to him in the beginning. And even through most of it, when his friends come to him, and at first seem to try to minister to him, but then they get frustrated. But here in the beginning, this is how Job tries to deal with it. Laura, could you read that, please? Job 1, 20 through 22. As is, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground and worshipped and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. In the beginning, Job understood that I, I, this is God's world. I am God's creation. And yes... I, I don't understand, but I'm still going to praise God. I, I don't want what happened. I don't appreciate what happened, but I'm going to praise God. And yet things go on, and things get worse, and things get harder, and Job gets to the point where he's breaking and cracking under pressure. And yes, we may be like that, but God says, no temptation will be so great that He will not give us a way out. So that temptation to crack and to fall, and to, to give in and turn from God, there will not be such a great pressure upon us that He will not give us a way out from underneath of it. It says that in the book of James, in the beginning, that these things will be used to our perfection, to work us, to change us, to, to mold us. So when we have these things, we have to praise God through them and say, God, you know, I know you're working me for something, you're changing me. That there's a reason for this, that all things are working for my good. It may not be right now. You know, I wouldn't have believed in 2005 and 2004 and some of the things in 1996, 1997, 1998, when I lost my grandfather. And in, in, in the 2000 and 2010 when I lost my grandmother. I wouldn't have believed all these different things were working to my good. But everything works to the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. And we must praise Him so that we can see that He works it for our good. I wouldn't be standing here if He didn't work it to my good. I wouldn't have a voice to praise Him if He didn't work it to my good. I wouldn't have three wonderful children, two wonderful son-in-laws, a beautiful, handsome, feisty, little baby bear grandson if he didn't work it to my good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He works it to your good. Praise him for it. Yeah. And again, that doesn't mean you're like, yay, bring the pain, God. No. Get me through the pain, God. Teach me how to deal with the pain, God. And I praise you that you'll make me stronger than the pain, God. I praise you that there's a way out of this. There's a way over it. There's a way under it. That, God, you're better than this. You're stronger than this. And that you can make me stronger than this. You can make me better than this. And that next time, I, I can deal with this in a different way. That God, you can do this for me and through me. That there's a purpose to this that I don't quite understand. That, you know, as a kid, when I got my, uh, my booster shots for the vaccinations, I was a big boy and I was pretty strong. It took four people to hold me down. Four adults to hold me down. I didn't understand. But I understand now because... Getting measles, mumps, getting polio, those things, that would have been devastating. So, yeah, they're rare, but they're still around. So, we don't understand that God working things, like it says in James, that He has to perfect us to get these things out of us. We don't understand that there's a reason for these spiritual vaccinations that it has to come, that it has to change us. That these things have to be worked out of us. So we can praise Him and say, God, thank you for working this. Thank you for doing this. Praise you, Lord, that you have gotten me through this. Praise you, God, that I am dealing with this now where I have people who support me. Yeah. Praise you, God, that I have a support structure. I have my Avengers around me. 
I'm not alone. I have, I have people, I had, I had some savings set to the side. So it's an, it's, it's an inconvenience, not an emergency. It, it, it's something where I, I'm, I'm flustered, but I'm not crying and broke and on the street. Amen. It's something that makes me confused and not, you know, homeless. Amen. It's something where I'm uncomfortable and not panicked. Amen. You know, we have to look at things a little different. Amen. We're talking together as a family yesterday, and I was talking about how we can learn to control the way we act, react, and interact. And through prayer, and through focused prayer, and, and through this, this meditation on God's Word, we can really do that. So when we get angry, it's natural, it happens. We can change that. And God can help us to change that and become more humble and realize people are going to upset us. And we upset people. It's not just a one-sided thing. We fr people frustrate us, but we frustrate people too. Mm -hmm. it, it goes both ways. And, and some... some just because somebody doesn't tell you that you frustrate them doesn't mean that you don't. Mm -hmm. They just might be better at not saying anything. They might, have, they might have a little more control in that area. So just think about that. Let's go to Romans. Romans 8, 24, 25, and 26, please. Romans 8, 24, 25, and 26. Could you read that for me, Mom, please? Romans 8.24 We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently, confidently. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. Mm -hmm. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in the harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. Amen. 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 You know, a lot of... Like I said, there's this teaching that I have on the website. If you ever want to go on there, it's under the six spiritual disciplines yeah. for a Christian. Prayer is one of them. Praising is one of them. And when you combine them, it gets even more powerful, yeah. in my opinion. And so prayer and praising, worship and praising. When you do these things together, it just it's like what they used to call synergy. You know, so when you combine these things, it helps you. It helps you to grow. Um, so when we stand up and say God is in control, we can thank God for his time, that he can be glorified. We can walk in faith and remember the disciples that asked Jesus. And he said, like, for example, in the book of John, when he was walking along and Jesus saw that man, that he was blind. And they said, Jesus, why is he blind? Who sinned? Was it him? Was it his parents? What did Jesus say? Anybody remember? He's at the side of the in the book of John. It's okay if you don't. I'm not trying to put him on his spot. Was to give God the word. Exactly. The man was blind on the side of the road. They were like, Jesus, why is he blind? Was this his sin, his parents' sin? What's going on? Because everything to them back then was about sin. And he was like, no, no, you understand. He was born blind so that God could be glorified because this. Boom, he healed him. He healed him. So sometimes what we go through is so that God can be glorified. So God can be glorified by what he does through us. Let that sink in for me. Romans 14, 11. Romans 14, 11. Dario, could you read that please? For the scriptures say... As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me, and every tongue will confess and give praise to God. You know, so, <laughs> I hate to say it like this, but you're going to praise Him. You're going to praise Him. That's right. 
whether you like it or not. Whether you do it now, you do it then. So why not get on board willingly? Amen. Get with the program. And, and yeah, some people are going to wait till that time when they go before the great white throne judgment and they're forced to their knees. Because everybody's going to go to heaven. Not everybody gets to stay. Because you're going to go, you're going to face your judgment. You're going to, God is going to say, did you, know, did you accept me? Did you accept the sacrifice of my son for you? I gave him for you. His blood was poured out for your sins. The, for the sins of the world, but specifically for you. For the choices that you made. Did you accept? So, as we think about praising Him, it's another choice. In this long relationship that we get to have with God, it's a choice to praise Him, a choice to worship Him, a choice to pray to Him, a choice to fellowship with Him and with other believers, a choice to just work on this relationship with Him, praising Him, just like, again, praising my children, praising my wife, praising my co-workers. When we um, look in the book of Luke 19, 37, 38, it says, When they reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessing on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But then... Some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied to Jesus, If they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. Glory Jesus. I think it's funny that these Pharisees had seen these things too. But they want to rebuke these people. Shut them up. They shouldn't be praising you. Tell them to be quiet. So, if it's, if it's an option between a stone huh. coming to life Jesus. and doing my job of praising God or me opening my fat mouth and singing praises to God, I think I'm going to do my job. Amen. That's why, you know, and again, I'm ask, not asking you guys. My church, my family, my body of Christ at large, my friends, to do anything I'm not trying to do myself. Mm -hmm. And yes, there's days where I don't always do it. I, I'm, I stand up here and I'm like, yeah, praise God. But I try. I put forth the effort. And yeah, I don't always feel every song. And I don't always know every word when we're doing praise songs. But again, it's not just about songs. It's about a way of life. about praising God in your speech about the words that you use, about the way that you talk to others, about when you're, when you're talking about the, the, your successes to others, uh, about when you share things on Facebook or Imager or Snapchat or any of these social media sites, when you, when you send your mom or dad a letter, any of these things we have opportunities to give God praise. We have to look for opportunities and make the most of them. This one is near and dear to my heart because I struggled with it for years. Book of James, chapter 3. Let's start at verse 8 through 12. Benjamin. But no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes the if, if sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing comes pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce fig? No, you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. 
And again, I have struggled with this. I, you know, and, uh, to be honest with you, I lost my temper the other day and because something went wrong and I said something. So I am not beyond losing my temper. I don't think any of us on earth are. But what it says here is that we must struggle. And then even, you know, in the book of 1 John, if we sin, we must go before God. Amen. So we can't... You know, those people who, who at one side of their mouth, oh, yeah, I was praying, praying, and then F that. Whoa, no, I'll leave. You know, and God is this, God is that. Screw you, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's a little bit rough. We have to find this ground where we know that it's wrong and we're Amen. trying Amen. and pushing to be better. Because it says very clearly here, and again, I had to come to grips with the scripture that I needed to change. Because there's something wrong with thinking that it's okay to do this. And that as true Christian disciples, it's not okay. It is just not. It says that it comes from the heart. Our words come from the heart. Our praises, if our praises are supposed to come from the heart, where do the curses come from? Mm. They don't come from our bowels. They don't come from my biceps. <laughs> they don't come from my belly button. They come from your heart, Jesus says. One last aspect I'd like to mention is praise music. I'm of a firm, firm belief that music was designed by God to be universal. No matter what land or people you go to, there's music. I personally believe there are no evil sounds or music. While yes, there are lyrics mm -hmm. that are inappropriate and glorify evil things, the same cannot be said of instruments or styles of music. God is a designer and giver of inspiration. So if he inspires a man or woman to make praise and rap, so be it. If he inspires another praise, him in hardcore rock or screamo, so be it. The praises of God are to be lifted up and announced before the multitudes. In the book of Psalms, especially 146 to 150, we see so much about the praise, shouting, dancing, singing, playing. God wants us to be 100% into his praise. That is why when he says, love God with all your strength, there is a great opportunity to do so. Corinth, uh, Amplified Bible, Habakkuk, uh, Three, one, please. Praise in private, praise in public, praise in church, praise on the street corner. Jesus said, if you are embarrassed of me, I will be embarrassed of you. The praise that truly glorifies God and exalts Jesus is the praise of his work in our life. To an unbeliever, when was the last time you praised like that? Mm. Habakkuk, third chapter, verse one. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet set to wild and enthusiastic music. Wild and enthusiastic music. <laughs> wild and enthusiastic music. That to me doesn't sound like a lot of music I heard in church growing up. Again, I only went to church three times growing up. So, we have to get out of this shell, people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, it took me a while, but again, I found the music that moved me. I found songs that moved me. And if you just inter introduce a few songs that move you that are, you know, and I've had debates before with people who say, oh, there's no Christian uh, artist. No, there's Christians who are artists, and they make Christian-themed music. So don't debate me. Just find music that is about God and Jesus Christ that encourages you. Stop it. Um, you know, find something that is about Jesus, mm -hmm. that moves you, that encourages you, and add it to your playlist. And, and put your playlist on random, so when it comes up, don't skip it. Let it become part of your repertoire. Let it become part of a new genre that you're introducing. And let God minister to you, and you'd be surprised when that happens, how it'll be, you know, a part of your new lifestyle. Um, because praise is important. Yeah. It's in your, in, like I said, it's more important you think. It's what helped bring me into my relationship with Jesus Christ. And the last thing I wanted to mention is, you know, I mentioned before in, in my grandson, praise God for him, that um, I made many mistakes with my children. And they, they're very kind. And they'll say, oh no, you're a great dad, you're a great dad. No, I made many mistakes. And... Um, they're great children. They have done wonderful things, and they are doing wonderful things. And Laura, my daughter, is a wonderful mommy, and her husband is a great daddy. But as I am trying to be a great 
not a great grandfather, but a wonderful grandfather. I'm trying to learn from the errors that I had and the mistakes that I made mm -hmm. so that I can be a better um, role model and, 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 and be, because I wasn't a Christian when they were babies. You know, uh, I was, she was 10, my daughter was 10 before I came to Christ. My son was six. So in that time frame, mm -hmm. they had a lot of influence from me. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know Jesus. And even then, as I was coming to Christ, there was still me maturing. Mm -hmm. There was still me getting to know the Lord. And I was bumps along the way. And me, like a diamond, having to chip off the edges and be polished up. So it was a rough road. And uh, I thank them for being patient with me and loving me. And uh, I just pray that I can be the grandfather that Joel deserves. Amen. 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 Pastor Nicole. Amen. It's a long walk, Pastor. Yes, it was. Praise God for Jesus. That message today was just a blessing because anybody who knows me and my walk knows that I love. I, when I say I love, I mean I love. Not like, oh, I love that cake. I love to praise God. And when I heard that message, not saying that other messages God has given is powerful, but this just blessed me and excited me so much about praising the power down because this, this praise that, that, that uh, Pastor talked about, this is a part of our witness. This is a part of our testimony that God will allow us to get through the pain. It is about fighting that battle against the evil one, and praise can do that, and God challenged me when I was at the table and wants me to challenge you. Just like they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, let praise be that breakfast for you. Take, just take the challenge for one week and see how it is. Just like you eat breakfast and you get that vitamins and minerals or just like you go to the gym or whatever. Try for one week in the morning wait, or however before you start your day. Try praising God with one or two songs that he puts in your spirit and see how your day will go with that spiritual food and that spiritual breakfast that you partake of. See how your spirit man becomes so full that it will bring about a joy and it will bring about a release in your life. In praise, through praise, you surrender. It is a form of worship that can allow you to literally become delivered and it can allow you to stay delivered. It said, let everything that has breath praise God. And again, as it said in Habakkuk, it talked about that crazy praise. In Habakkuk, it talked about that jubilant, that radical, that I seem like I lost my mind, that dancing out of my clothes like David did, giving it all that I can give, fanatical praise. This is the type of praise that sometimes you need to break free from all those chains and to soar and to move on. Amen. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, Father, for praise. We thank you for praise and prayer, as Pastor was saying, that is a combined weapon. It's almost like having an axe but with, with brass knuckles on it or, 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 or a gun with, 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 with a knife on it. Or, or, or Father, it, it's, 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 it's a double-edged sword. It is powerful, Father. It is therapy and praise and praising and that communication with you, Father. It, it breaks change. It knocks down walls. It aggravates the enemy. We know that the enemy cannot stand the praises of God's people. He flees. He can't stand that praise, that faith, that hope, that trust that comes from within. That when we open our mouth, but we're, not, we're not cursing. When we open our mouth, we're not saying improper things. When we open our mouth, we're giving you the glory and it shines from within. He flees 
that prayer, Father, that we thank you that you've given to us with praise and that communication with thankfulness and adoration and appreciation activates something in the supernatural realm that brings us through the valley and out into our promise. Not just looking at the promise and never making it, but getting to the promise and walking in it, Father. So, Father, we thank you for challenging us, Lord God. Father, we thank you for being here with us. You said, though your mother and father forsake you, I'll never forsake you. Thank you for giving us, Father God, weapons of warfare that are not carnal, Father, that, that people in the world may not know about, but when they see us praise, when they see that radical and that jubilant praise, Father, when they see us like we lost our minds in the midst of a chaotic situation, it bears a, 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 a testimony. They bear witness to some incredible things, and they want that. They want that like they want the new Jordans that came out. They want that like they want the, the new Uggs that came out. They want that, and it's priceless. So, Father, let us give them that. Let us, Father, witness to somebody through our praise. Let us witness to somebody, Father, through our attitude. Let us witness to somebody who's in the valley with us because, Father, of what you have put within us, that praise, that joy, that prayer, that worship, that adoration unto you. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing now, that you're here with us now. And, Father, what you will get us through this week. Bless you. We thank you, Lord God, for the attitude of gratitude, Father. And, Father, we just want to tell you how much we appreciate and we love you. Let us continue to praise you through the day, through the week, Father, through this journey. Father, we ask you for every tool, every resource, and strength. Father, we ask you for supernatural favor that we've never seen before. For you said above what we can think, ask, or can imagine. Father, we love you. We appreciate you. And we ask, Father, if there's any impure way in us, anything that ain't right, anything that is stopping us or deterring us from reaching where you want us to go, reveal it. That, Father, it can be fixed and done away with so we can soar and not be weighed down because of the things of this life, of this world. Father, we give you glory, honor, praise, and we thank you for breaking every demonic stronghold, Lord, in the name of Jesus, so we can get free and stay free. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.